The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
pain of being separated from our better self. The pain of being separated from God. The valley of Baca, the valley of the weeper, a place, you see, to weep bitter tears of contrition and remorse on your way to that holy place, that place of healing, where your sins will be forgiven there in that temple of the Lord. And so another image we find in our gospel lesson today is one person who is in their personal valley of the weeper. We find a tax collector. Now I would begin to understand or even speculate as to what he was doing there, why he was standing apart from the rest of the community, why he was beating his chest and hanging his head, and why he was choking and sobbing confession of sinfulness and sorrow. I don't know why, I can't read his mind. But St. Luke said he did. That was his posture, beating his chest, hanging his head, and sobbing. Now part of it might be of who he was. He was a tax collector. A tax collector at that time and in that place was one who makes his money by cheating other people, or at least by strong arming them. Now the tax collector in that great structure of the Roman Empire was at the very bottom rung. Caesar wanted financial demands, made financial demands upon the governors and upon the kings under him who in turn made demands upon the regional officials. And so it went down the line until it came to the tax collector. Well, the tax collector said, Caesar demands X number of dollars. We don't care how you get it, but you gotta get it, because that's what we want, X number of dollars. And by the way, anything above, it's yours. <laughs> That's your salary. So that led to a system of corruption, a system of resentment, a system of strong arming people in order to get the taxes for the men on top. Consequently, they were not well liked. They were at the bottom of the rung probably just a little bit, and only a little bit, above a leper. At least you couldn't catch a contagious disease, but you went away a little bit lighter because your pockets were not as full as they were before. Now why is he there? Why is he pounding his chest? Why is he hanging his head and sobbing? Perhaps he finally woke up to the conclusion that what he was doing and called upon to do was not right. And that he was within a system that was trying to take away the rights of the people that was not morally and faithfully right. And so maybe he came to an aha moment where he said, can't do this anymore. And so he went to confess. Or maybe it was a bit gradual. He worked his way up, maybe tried several times to go to that holy place, to confess his sins, to say he was sorry for, for coercing money from others and from participating in a system of governance that abused and oppressed his own people. Perhaps, perhaps he was confessing the insatiable greed that had pulled him farther and farther away from his God and from his own true self as a person of faith, a 
person of morality. Perhaps he woke up one day and realized what he had done and who he had become. We don't know. All we know is he stands apart there in that temple there in his own private little valley of Baca, the valley of the weeper. And he sobs out his misery. He sobs out his remorse. Another image in this gospel lesson. Across the room stands another man, as far away from this tax collector as he possibly could stand, a man who stood there in the first century equivalent of a book Brooks Brothers suit, who looks over his designer glasses at the tax collector, who strings his silk tie, who pulls and makes sure that his cufflinks are straight, a man who rolls his eyes, a man who throws back his head as he looks up to heaven and begins to speak. Oh God, I thank you for making me such a fine fellow, with such a fine character, with such a fine life. Especially I thank you that I am not like one of these little insignificant people, and especially not like that awful tax collector over there. Amen. With greatest regard to your humble servant, George M. Pharisee, Esquire. <laughs> or maybe something like that. Now Luke ends our story today in the Gospel by telling us that the tax collector went home justified. He went home being made right with God and at peace with himself. The tax collector had came came through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping and sorrow. And there he found, in place of weeping and sorrow, springs, pools of water, pools of God's mercy, and pools of God's love. There he found his soul washed. There he found cleansing. He found that he had made, been made right, and now he was ready to go forward with his life. On the other hand, the Pharisee walked away empty-handed. Was God playing favorites here? No. For everything the Pharisee said was absolutely true. He did what he was supposed to do as a Pharisee. And apparently he did it well. The problem was there was no room for God, not that God didn't want to be and give his mercy, but there was no room for God because that Pharisee was so filled with himself. So filled with himself there wasn't even a little portion that God could enter. And so his prayer left no room for God to come in, full of self. Indeed, that prayer pretty much addressed who and what the Pharisee was. And it wasn't really addressed to God, it was addressed to himself. Now, the question is, many times when you study scripture, the instructor will say, and who do you identify with? And who are you in this story? Who am I in this story? Who are you in this story? Are you the repentant sinner or the self-righteous Pharisee? Well, most of the time and most of us are a little bit of both. A little bit of both, Dr. Luther said, we are all saint and sinner at the same time. Simo Justus said to us. All of us, you see, all of us have
have a little bit of that Pharisee in us. We want to think that we are good people doing good things. And most of the time we are. And there are times when we look with contempt on some other people. That's part of being human. A country preacher once reminded me and told me, son, if people was perfect, they wouldn't need you <laughs> or Jesus. If people was perfect, they wouldn't need you or Jesus. Saint and sinner at the same time. All of us have taken that trip maybe once or twice or maybe more through that valley of Baca, the place of sorrow, the place of remorse. All of us have those dark places and those dark times that we'd rather not admit to or revisit. And yet we are all pilgrims on the, on the journey from earth to our heavenly home, to the holy mount, to the holy place where God dwells. And so we must, you and I, in our lives, walk through those valleys, the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of weeping. We are on a journey. And the only highway to Zion, we are reminded in our psalm for today, goes that way, through that valley. The only route to Christ leads by the foot of the cross, his and ours. And so we come to this place, St. Luke Lutheran Church. We come to this place on this day to pray, to open our hearts and lives to the one who already knows all there is to know about us, about you, about me. And so we stand, not apart from one another. We bow our heads and then we lift up our hearts knowing that our God loves us with a perfect love, and that our God sends us out of this place into the world to lead other pilgrims through that valley of Baca, that valley of tears and weeping, to the great, wonderful, promised spring, the watering spring, God's grace. Amen.